is outnumbered. I'm Emily Campagno, and joining me today, Fox News correspondent Molly Lyon, Fox News contributor and host of Tommy Laren is Fearless on Outkick, Tommy Laren. Paul Morrow, I think, um, I think there's a word that President Biden uses. Right? Is it, oh, it's malarkey. That's <laughs> yeah. what that all is. Can you imagine I'm hired the left, but otherwise, I don't think there was a lot of substance here, and I don't think it moved the needle. And interestingly, okay, so Tommy, the Wall Street Journal editorial board said this to Paul's point about the interview. Kamala Harris abstract on a lot of things, and she does that so she doesn't have to take a solid position, at least now, because in 2019 and 2020, she took very solid positions, actually gave her credit when she did that. Because, But what I would have liked to see a follow-up be is, you stood on a stage talking about climate change, and you told us that fracking and fossil fuels were going to lead to a climate apocalypse, basically in summary, that we need to take care of the environment, the green, why fracking is no longer going to cause a climate apocalypse. Otherwise, you were lying then, or you don't care that we descend into a cl climate apocalypse. We need to get straight answers on why she changed. We didn't get any of that last night. Saying that your values haven't changed tells us nothing. And some, Leslie, in her party are sort of saying, like, look, well, maybe this wasn't necessarily a bad day, a not total flop. They say, they say it's I'm a not new running. To the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the point. Kamala hasn't given any type of given a type of indication or explanation of her uh, critiquing running up to this, that she was bringing him along as a protector, as the teddy bear, as the guy that was going to jump in and save her. And I don't think he helped at all. In answer. She's like, did you misspeak? He could have said, I misspoke. I just care so much about this issue of gun safety and our kids. Instead, he goes into a long thing. And the answer and the, so it's still unanswered. It's still to figure out. What bothers me, just a quick point, as somebody who's from the Midwest, is that I felt like he tried to put other Midwesterners who were not happy with that. Maybe yeah. I was watching a different interview because I saw him say, I misspoke, I, and he said he didn't have weaponry. Due to grammar. Yeah. Due to grammar, he said. Well, my wife said. But yet he wouldn't call them when Minneapolis was burning down. You wouldn't call your own unit? I can't understand that. He should know a lot of those guys. It's like me not calling the NYPD. I don't understand that. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think we have more questions than answers after last night, which seems to then not be the intention. All right, guys, Americans are struggling with... ...to brag about inflation falling to less, less than 3%. It was actually lower when they took office than it is now. Paul, I want to get your thoughts on how she handled... Very predictable questions about the economy. Yeah, she looked uncomfortable, sort of pained, like she was against the wall. And that had to be the most obvious question she knew was coming at her. I go three and a half, four years. But if you're going to own it all, then you have to own the bad stuff with it, which means the Afghan pullout, mm. the poorest border, law He's put out before the 25000 for our new home buyers, the child tax credit. But we, we still lack the clarity on the specifics on how it's being paid for. The follow-up questions, what you're talking about, Emily. Right. What exactly was that? When she talked about an opportunity economy, she likes to remind us, she is zero drawn on experience whatsoever to reassure me that she, on a daily basis, is actually in total command of information and experience. And she was, it was an affront to be even asked that. I was, it was really underwhelmed. Well, Leslie, there was a lot of buildup to this. How much would she embrace Bidenomics? How mm -hmm. much of the last three years of her administration would she own? Your thoughts? Well, first of all, it's not her administration, it's the Biden Joe Biden. Administration. And last time I checked, I think we all went to the same history class. Because it wasn't working. He wasn't feeling the plight and the hardship of the American people, simply telling everybody things are okay when they're not feeling that they're okay, wasn't working. It's not going to work for Kamala either. But what strikes me when she's asked about the economy, I think of Joe Biden. Joe Biden at one time could have answered that question. Maybe not today because of other issues. But at one point, Joe Biden could have answered that question. I might not have liked it, but he could have given you an answer. We didn't really get much of an answer from Kamala. And what also bothers me is in terms of the economy, her first instinct when she had to put a policy forward was essentially price fixing, which was a horrible idea by everyone's account, even yours, Leslie. We talked about it last week on this very- Didn't get clarity on either. Exactly. She said that she wants to stop price gouging, but then it's price fixing. So how are you going to do that? I wish there would have been more follow-up into how are you going to create your opportunity economy? We didn't get that. Yeah. When is the next interview? When is the first press conference? We're still waiting. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> uh, coming up, the mayor and councilwoman in the Denver suburb of Aurora happen? What are, we, what are we looking at there? First of all, let's recognize something. They restarted the program. And that's so condescending due to people. Once again, I am from the Midwest. I'm from South Dakota. Neighbor. People can remain behind bars and allow single women and everyone else to actually thrive. Why would you err on the side of risking? Down. Remember something. It's because they're flying them in.
Boom. Well, it looks like the joy over at Kamala's campaign headquarters usual way to get the campaign as far as it has. Things change suddenly. Your thoughts? I, I don't find it that surprising that there would be some mi some mix up of signals in the campaign, Emily. Right, you're right. And that's you are right. That is being emanated then from Kamala is not one of leadership or clarity or organization. And we've seen that throughout her tenure as vice president. We've seen that when over 30 staffers anonymously went on the record with or off. So I think, you know, anybody who's worked in a bureaucracy has seen this. When somebody gets a promotion that was unexpected, all right, and all of a sudden lined up the way they normally would be when it goes through the normal process. So there's a lot of confusion. How do you cure that? You need a very strong hand. She's relatively new. The campaign is still relative. Um, this is uh, it, 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 totally what happens when you have, you know, a new company, um, a new leader, um, a new ticket. <laughs> and, that, and that is the case here. I'm not very surprised. Well, I'm very excited when I see the crowds out and well, there. The, for the question is, you know, to, to Emily's point she made previously, uh -huh. there were uh, rumors about her staff even before this happened. Now mm -hmm. there are rumors within the campaign. And now... Theoretically, if she wins a presidency, you know, how will she handle leadership of all these different entities and thoughts and ideas, Tommy? So that's the concern to early voting into Election Day. But then if she does win the election and she becomes president, you can't just get through the four years. A, a new survey <laughs> claims that nearly half of Americans under 35 would rather quit their job than work with people who have different political views. That is next. So I think there's more to this. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this is just about working with people who have different viewpoints than you do. Comfortable if your boss is a liberal and you're a conservative? That's what I'm actually more concerned about. I would hope that that's not the case. But in terms of cultivating a next to someone, a luxury to say, I don't like your viewpoint. So not necessarily the vitriol, but an inability to even entertain yeah. it because they've been coddled in these petri dishes as they've been raised. I have opinions. I want, that's all I want to do. I want to talk and get all these different opinions and talk to all these real people. But I think some of the solution could be, you know, you don't deeply de Go ahead, quit. <laughs> Go ahead, see what happens. See how it works out for you, okay? Yeah. I don't like my, like anything to the extreme, but if you go to work and it's fulfilling three or the four major boxes that you need to fill, including keeping you above ground or your family above ground, get over it and move on. I'm sorry, but this is... I would quit for a boss's viewpoint as if they were a 49ers fan. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> All right, we're outnumbered in just a moment. <laughs> Last but not least, the Fox. Yeah, Emily, tell us more about uh, what you've been covering. Yeah, so we've got four different episodes that are unique and tell. And Paul, you and I were talking about that. Something that has changed recently means that there will be better uh, information given to prospective students. Yeah, so a lot of these schools are uh, embedded in urban areas that have high crime. You know, we talked about the migrant crime, other crimes or crimes that have occurred on campus. A lot of people don't know it's there. It's not entirely accurate. And schools can play with it a little bit. But the bottom line is you get a pretty good snapshot if your kids going off to school what you may be getting into you should look at it well thank you for that you can all download crimes on campus at foxcrimepodcast.com and wherever you listen to podcasts thank you for watching today and now here's america reports